I decided to ask the Yu-Gi-Oh! community what they think about this $1,000 meta deck format. Woo! I wanted to get the players' thoughts, both from competitive and casual players alike. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the community thinks about, well, an expensive format. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as I continue to look to the left, making sure that I'm in focus, and we climb even higher, the 1300 ladder. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So, I made a post in uh, the Jacksonville, Florida Yu-Gi-Oh! community, that's the local Yu-Gi-Oh! community scene that I'm in, and before you say, oh, well, you didn't really ask the community, uh, there is currently over 500 members in this group, so this isn't, like, just 20 kids who, you know, play Yu-Gi-Oh! casually, you know, in at the recess field. Like, these are competitive, high-level players. There are some, I guess, more casual players in here. There's actually a particular player. Hi, Arthur. What's up, man? Uh, who plays Time Wizard formats, who has been in the scene for years like I have. Um, and as someone who has been playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! for 16 years now and has seen many different formats, I really wanted to get the players' thoughts on this because even though this is technically a local scene, there are a lot of players in this group that span not just Florida but you know other parts of the U.S. So I like to think that this is a pretty big sample size of what at least the competitive player base and the competitive mindset is of players right now in this format. And it's very interesting to see what the dichotomy has been amongst different players here. Um, so there's, God, there's 41 comments on this. So we're probably not going to get to all of them, but editing me knows better than I do at this point. Of course, we got to start off with the best one. Shout out to the YGO process. My friend uh, Tino, I like it. Pay to win keeps people away from my hobby. <laughs> he's like, we're going to see how serious you are if you want to win. Obviously, he's joking. Um, but it's really funny um, that like someone would comment that. Uh, <laughs> I just think that that's really funny. Um, but no, like I'm sure most people aren't being like, oh, yeah, like pay to win. It keeps people away from my hobby. He's, he's joking. But I, I did think that that was really funny. Now, here's where one of the interesting comments are. Um, shout out to my buddy Bradley. So he says here, the price of the cards is ultimately the player's fault. They choose to not buy product, which means they no longer have a hand in the secondary market. They also don't spend money on cards until they have to, which ultimately means they can't control the inventory that these vendors have. They could have boxes of the new set and or bought wanted, wanted secret simple spoil, when they were 60 to 90 apiece. True. Them not buying product also causes vendors excuse me, to not buy as much from the distributors, which means, which in turn means short printing of the God sets, like the really good sets, uh, just my two cents. Um, someone here commented something interesting, which I thought that this was an interesting back and forth. Uh, this person here says, when the product is crap, why would players buy? Konami needs to give us product with more value than a set full of garbage plus one 100 plus dollar staple, then people will buy. The rarity co collection sold like hotcakes, true. That was crazy good value, not necessarily monetarily, but to get all staples that a player was previously priced out on. And this is why we see a lot of people right now in the TCG are saying that we should do the OCG model where for years, I mean literal years, they have under rarity valued, I guess for lack of a better term, cards that they have bumped up to like secret rares. Like I think I remember Capital G said that Dark Arm Dragon was a rare back in like 2008 when it went over to the OCG and it was a secret rare here. And this was way before like Konami had control of set production and, you know, not having short print stuff in core sets. As if, in case you don't know, back in the day, eons ago when the pyramids were still young, Upper Deck Entertainment actually controlled the manufacturing and production of the game, I believe is how it worked out. So, Upper Deck was in charge of sets like the Duelist Genesis Phantom Darkness, short printing things like Dark Arm Dragons that were like $200 to $250 a piece. And then you have a deck like Teledad that is tier zero that if you weren't playing that deck you were losing, that was like $1,000 plus you were dropping hundreds if not 1000 bucks on the Crush Card Virus prize card just to guarantee that you would top an event. So when people I see now in 2024 complaining like, oh, Fire Kings is super expensive, not that it's not a good complaint to have, technically it is, 
at least you have other deck options to play, whether it's Flunder, Eldritch, Sprite. You know, you have these other options available to you that you didn't have technically back then. Um, the back and forth continues on here, and um, Bradley replies, uh, with the card pool is finite, there isn't a way to just give better sets without destroying the secondary market or the game. The only way to truly fix it, in my opinion, is for Konami to eliminate OTS and sell their own cards. Like, the rarity collection is a reason the market is so bad. If more people had spent their money on Age of Overlord, instead of that, it wouldn't be so expensive. That set destroyed the entire max rarity market. I don't think he's totally wrong on that, right? Because remember when we got quarter centuries of cards that were already Starlights, the Starlight mark went <laughs> right down the toilet, and, like, it, it was insane. Like, a th what was it, 10,000 Dragon, I think, was, like, at its peak, like, a grand or 1,500, and, like, it's really dropped off. Like, it's been really interesting to see. Um, if you remember Appalosa Bow, the Goddesses, I think their highest was, like, $1,500 for the Starlights. So, uh, the back and forth continues on here. Konami should not care about the secondary market. They should care about making uh, the best product they can so that their customers will buy product them, from them and not through the secondary market. And, I mean, this is true. I mean, this is why you hear people say support your OTS stores, right? Because, I mean, it gives you a place to play. Um, you know, people even like Robbie Cole, I've heard say, you know, whether it's buying a soda or a candy bar or a pack or two from your OTS, you're supporting your OTS store because you want them to be around. I mean, God, I remember... Years ago here in uh, Jacksonville, I think that there was maybe one place to play for the longest time. Um, there was Dan Sports Cards and Games. Shout out to, to Dan. And then later on, I remember back in the day, we got Wiz, uh, Redbeards and Wizards in St. Augustine, for those of you who remember that from back in the day. Um, and I think that those were like really the only two places. And then we got like a Phoenix Games that eventually shut down. Now we have Cool Stuff Games in Jacksonville. So like th there's a few different places now. I'm obviously not going to go through and name all of them. But the point remains that now there are other card shops to play at to where you don't just have one or none at all. I've heard people tell stories where they're like, God, I got to drive three hours to go play Yu-Gi-Oh! somewhere. Like sometimes there's just not a card shop nearby. Um, this conversation goes on to, uh, <laughs> uh, Bradley's just like, this statement's redundant. If they stop caring about the secondary market, then players will continue to complain about prices. Yeah, we're, we're going to move on. Um, this person here says, Teledad decks were like 2000 so this format's still pretty cheap in comparison. Uh, we kind of went back and forth here talking about prices and stuff, and I mean, that... Uh, th this guy here has a good point. I mean, like I said, Teledad was super expensive. And when you look at it in that comparison, uh, yeah, like this, this isn't terrible. And like I said in my video from the other day, you're only spending a grand if you don't have literally any card for the deck. If you've got staples like Droll, Imperm, if you have an SP Little Knight, there's, there's $115 wiped off the top. Uh, that you have to get because like SP Little Knight's a one of. And like one person comments here, if I can find it, um, they make the point that you can play Fire King Dogmatica. Like, it's a fairly cheap package that uh, you can do. Um, I don't know if this is the comment here, but this is a good point. Um, mixed as one of the best decks right now is a structure, and it is playable without the Snake Eyes package. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, can substitute a $20 Dogmatica package for right now at least. Been a while since a structure deck was good enough on its own. Yeah, that's true. I see most of the prices being the side stuff and supplemental cards. As a guy who kind of dropped the game for a few years, it actually feels like a decent time to get back into the game and be able to play well on a casual slash semi-competitive level. And again, this kind of harps on the point that I already made that you don't have to spend $1,000 on Fire King. Some of the Rescue Ace cards are getting reprinted in Maze of Millennia. Why not wait until after the pre-sales and buy those cards and play like a budget version of Rescue Ace? Like there's nothing wrong with that. Or, you know, go spend 150 bucks on a Flunder deck and just don't play Thrust. And even then, Thrust is getting the reprint and that might even drop as well. Uh, this person here says, the price of decks right now is pretty insufferable to be honest. It's the main reason I'm not willing to compete. Dropping more than a car payment on an almost necessary engine for most decks this format is pretty insane. For the people that can afford it, cool, but the fact that the game has this big of a bar to entry is pretty rough. I played from Toss Format 2019 to now, and I can confidently say that the game doesn't need to be this expensive ever. I threw in that little 2019 point for y'all who maybe didn't play Toss Format. I didn't play a lot of Toss Format. I almost kind of wish I would have played more. Uh, this person said, but for real though, if TCG was like OCG and we got the same cards but different rarities, it would bring more people into the game. It's hard for beginners that are on a budget trying to compete but can only afford so much, have an average deck get stomped on because they can't afford expensive stuff, it discourages them from playing. That's a really, really true point. And this is why, like, even when I was talking about Master Duel, aka Master Shits, the other day, 
where you get these players who think that they're a good player or they think that their deck is good in master shits, but then they bring it into the IRL game and they just get stomped because they have the lack of knowledge or they're not playing what's actually the best deck in the format, whether it's Rescue Ace, Fire King, insert deck name here, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, this person says, I think the complexity of the game pushes more players away. The game isn't the same as the Yu-Gi-Oh! we played on the playground. Even in the OCG, they're having issues with retaining players. I actually know that. Um, and I made the joke that I said that that's how my dad feels since I made him rage quit uh, when I went full Fire King combo. My dad's like, this is just bullshit. <laughs> um, keep in mind, my dad played Mystic Mind Trash for four years, so it's it's kind of whatever. But that's also an interesting point, right? Like, some people have said, you know, what's the new Master Rule going to be? What's the new summoning mechanic going to be? What's the new rule going to be that Konami implements like every four years roughly? And a lot of people have said like, no, no more summoning mechanics, no more making the game more complicated. And honestly, like that's true. Like you cannot tell me that when you play goat control, you play a match of goat format 2005, and then you come into 2024, you go and tell me it's the same game. Like I've been playing this game for 16 years competitively. I've been playing pretty much since it came out uh, just casually. Uh, it's not the same game. It's just not. And that's okay. Like, every every format has its own merit, right? And there's something that you can learn from every format. Um, but yes, the game is very complicated, and there is that barrier to entry. Like, I've heard people all the time say, Pokemon's like the most basic game of the bunch. When you compare it to Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh!, the two other big juggernauts, like Pokemon's the most basic one. There's also uh, this last point here that I want to talk about that I think is really interesting. This person says, can't help but feel like overall inflation is also playing its part as well. It's even harder to justify spending $400 plus on an engine when basic needs slash utilities are higher than they've been in years. So you're going to scrutinize high spending on a card game even more than you normally do. Um, and yeah, that's a really good point. You know, for those of you who don't live in the States, inflation's kind of high right now like uh inflation has a bit of a dump truck if you know what i mean um and so it's very difficult to justify spending hundreds of dollars on a card game and then like just go to a regional and scrub out like this is why i say i buy whatever deck i want to play turn around sell it to the vendors and just move on with your day you lose five dollars in the process cool like at least you recoup let's say 855 of that 900 dollars um Oh, and here's another couple good points too. Uh, I think Bonfire being that price is crazy. I can't see that card being higher than 80 on release because of meta fire decks and events coming up, but the card shouldn't be more than 50 to 60 bucks afterwards. Pre-sale was the same price as Prosperity back in the day. That's true. I think there's budget options for this card and many expensive cards, but to be honest, reprints always happen unless you're a highly competitive player and super serious about the game. Prices shouldn't matter. There was also an interesting comment that for the life of me, I cannot find that I wish I could where someone had mentioned how um da, 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 da. someone had mentioned like how that's very like good competitive players that are like god tier like pack and all of them how they're not going to be as worried about the prices because their sponsors are fitting the bill and i wish that i could find it here uh here we go i bet a lot of the top players aren't dropping this kind of money on these engines their sponsors are much easier to stay on top of the curve when someone else is footing the bill that is true. All these big players like Pac, Joshua Schmidt, Chris LeBlanc, whatever, these people got fucking sponsors. They're not dropping a thousand dollars on a deck. Their sponsors are dropping the money and saying, if you scrub out, like give us the cards back. Like that's something else to keep in mind too, uh, that some of these people with sponsors are probably having their sponsors pay for this stuff. So I think that that's just something interesting. I thought it was a really interesting point. Um, so I thank you to everybody in the Jacksonville community who commented on this. I think that this was a really interesting discussion. Um, and I think it's an interesting discussion as a whole to have a uh, shout out to all the people, whether I mentioned you by name or not, that comment on this. I really appreciate the data, but guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there something here that I mentioned that you agree with? Is there a side of the argument or discussion rather that you agree with or don't agree with? Um, I'd really like to know all that and more guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.